What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest dirt face storm on this device. And this is the 19th June 2020 build of this dirt face storm as you are noticing here. On top we get the dirt face logo and the Android version is 10 of course. And if you see the security patch is latest of June 5th 2020 and this is the official build of course. We can see the change logs from here. The stock kernel is the Storm Breaker kernel, and here the SLNX status is enforcing. In the system panel, we have the Dirt Faced updater, and you can check for updates from here. Also, you can install updates from this OT update panel, but you can directly flash it manually too with the Orange Fox recovery. Whenever there is a new update, you can download the full ROM and just flash it and reboot on top of this. You don't need to wipe anything while updating. Talking about flashing this ROM, I came from a different custom ROM. So I wiped cache, Dalvik system and data. Then I flashed the ROM file and just rebooted. Nothing like G apps and stuff are needed over here. And my storage is decrypted. So I did not need to flash any kind of if crypt disabler or something. And Redmi Note 5 Pro does not actually need it. My firmware is currently 11.0.3 global firmware. That's what I am on. If you are not on the latest firmware, just flash the global version 11.0.3 firmware. I'll link it below. And the stock keyboard present over here is Gboard. So yeah, and by the way, again, the ROM does not need to flash any GApps because GApps is already included in the ROM file itself. Now the stock camera over here is not that interesting that I did not like. This is an old kind of Google camera as you are noticing. And yes, it does the job and front camera and stuff should be working fine just like this. But yeah, it's not as good as MIUI camera, of course. Now let's talk about the stock launcher. Let me go into the settings and as soon as I go into the settings, you will see this is the launcher launcher present by default here. So let me go back inside this gestures. We have this double tap to sleep gesture. You can set it to sleep or you can choose any kind of gestures from here and this launcher has a ton of customizations you can customize everything from here like the themes and stuff and on the stock launcher there is the double tap to sleep as you can see you can just double tap anywhere and let me show you the filmed scanner speed too over here as you can see the device unlocks pretty fast not a problem let me try with the right hand's index finger and as you can see, the device unlocks pretty fast, no issues with the Figment scanner. And again, talking about the stock launcher, we have the Google's Discover page to the left. Swiping down gets you to the notification panel. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer. And I have also disabled the suggestions over here. And the widgets and stuff should be working pretty fine. Now, the quick settings panel looks like this. And I have added some toggles over here. There is also this Dirac sound. Let me show you, it does not actually go into the settings, it just enables or disables the audio direct. This is actually shows as an app over here as you can see. But you cannot go into the direct audio direct settings from here. That's a little bit of bummer I guess. And the screen recorder is present, this is a oxygen waste kind of screen recorder. As you are noticing, you can change the resolution, the bit rate of the video, then the number of frames for the screen recorded video. And you can also choose the internal or the microphone audio source from here. So yeah, pretty much a lot of customizations for this kind of screen recording. You can disable peak notification and stuff. And if you want to see the more toggles, as you can see, there are these many of them. You can also add the screenshot if you want that over there. And you have bunch of more things over here. But I do not see the FPS info or the FPS count option over here. Let me show you the settings panel right now. Here we have the Dark Quest, that's where you will find all the customizations for this ROM. Inside theming, we have the custom themes over here and you can customize a the theme and you can set an accent color just like this from here. As you are noticing, there are pretty much a lot of accent colors present. And over here, we also have these kind of clocks. We do not have a lot of options, but there is only this kind of like six options, I guess. And inside grid, you can change the home screen grid to six by six too, if you want that. And in terms of the stock wallpaper, we have only this wallpaper and I clicked a picture over here and there is no live wallpaper present by default at least. But you can of course install the MIUI 12 live wallpapers if you want to. Here is a card for you. Inside status bar, we have the system icons. You can enable the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons from here. Then we have show 4G instead of LTE, data disabled icon. 
and then the Vaulty icon chooser is there too so you can choose between these many Vaulty icons I don't have a sim card in it but Vaulty should work fine then status bar logo you can enable battery icon is there you can customize it as you can see I have chosen it to be big circle but you can choose between these many options and you can choose the battery percentage to stay inside the icon or next to the icon then battery percentage when charging option is there then let me scroll down we have the notification ticker this is a beta feature it says you also have the battery bar customization if you want it and inside quick settings panel we have this status bar quick pull down option you can have it on right edge or left edge or anywhere then we have the quick setting panel opacity and header image control is there too you can set a particular header image if you want that brightness slider option is there and then we have this tiles area option and show panels and stuff is there footer area header area you can customize however you want it inside buttons we have the enabling the two or three button navigation bar i guess then screen off power button torch option is there then volume panel settings are there and here is how the volume panel should look like and you can also expand it just like this as you can see it does this very cool animation let me go back to the gestures here we have the AOSP gestures from here you can choose the android 10 gestures and as you can see this is how it looks like i don't see the option to like increase the size of this pill bar but yeah that's how it is but you can have some customizations from here you can also choose two or three button navigation from here too let me go back we have the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar and this is a really handy feature and i do use it and i like it and double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both are there and here is how the screenshot thing works the three finger screenshot gesture this is the oxygen OS kind of screenshot you can also scroll over here or you can edit them if you want to or you can delete them from here inside lock screen we have the figment authentication vibration but there is no always unlock with the figment scanner which is a bummer and status bar option is there lock screen charging info is there and as you can see you can also change the lock screen charging font like the charging info font so that is really cool and clock widget option is there whenever you see these kind of bars on the settings that means you can customize that thing so yeah you can customize the date widget clock widget you can change the size of it the font of it everything and media cover art music visualizer and stuff you can set a custom like owner info over here inside power menu we have the advanced reboot option and let me show you in the power menu this is how it will look like even if you have advanced reboot it won't appear right away you have to tap restart then you will see the advanced rebooting option to directly reboot to recovery or fast boot now inside notifications we have the notification light option and then battery charging light you can have this battery light into not disturb mode too then blink flashlight for incoming call and stuff is there the charging animation is there heads up notification you can enable or disable it from here edge lighting option is there and you can change the color of this edge lighting kind of notification that's cool you can change the repeat count the duration of it and of course you can change the color from here pretty cool let me go back and the in-call vibration is present here too so you can have the vibration particularly for vibrate on connecting call inside animations we have the whole UI animation over here and you can change the like activity animation and stuff if you want that inside mask we have the wake up on charge disabling option then some signature spoofing stuff is there and inside about again we have this dirt fist kind of thing and you can donate to the developers if you want to from here inside battery this is how it looks like it shows the battery temperature on the bottom and the adaptive battery settings is there too and you can check the full usage from here the battery life should be decent enough and you can get up to six hours of screen on time easily if your battery is good enough on this device because this is a really old device inside display settings we have the lock screen display and here we have the always on when charging and stuff we have the night light option and you can turn it on or schedule that or change the intensity of the night light adaptive or auto brightness option is there then we have the screen timeout option double tap to wake is there let me show you the double tap to wake actually works as you can see it actually worked now let me unlock let's reduce the brightness and i have noticed this bug that like i have lowered the brightness right now right now if i double tap to sleep and as you can see the brightness just increased again that is a little weird let me just double tap over here let's unlock and again the brightness has been increased so yeah this bug is there let me scroll down we have the dark theme option over here you can turn on and schedule it if you want to and you can also change the accent colors from here in the display settings this is a really cool option that it is there and you can change the accent colors whenever you want there are a plethora of accent colors like this show me orange and stuff and like you can see right this just scrolls through a lot of options for the accent colors even one plus red is there 
The primary color I have set it to black AF because the background becomes totally black with this kind of primary color. In the dark theme it helps. And then we have the headline and body fonts, plethora of fonts over here too for the whole UI. Let me go back, we have the icon shapes option and the status bar icon options are there. Inside sound settings, let me scroll down, we have the Mi Audio Direct and you can choose between these mini earphones of Xiaomi and as you can see there are plethora of options for these earphones and the sound output via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is super good over here, I don't have a problem with it. You can also choose a preset like this rock, jazz, pop, etc. Let me go back, you can disable the screenshot sound, charging vibration, dial pad tones etc from here. Then we have the vibrate for calls option and you can also change the ringtone vibrate pattern from here from these many options. Now inside security, the only thing missing over here is the face unlock, yes we do not get face unlock and that is a little bit disappointing. This Google Play system update shows red by default but I think if you tap on it, it will update automatically and after the reboot it will be fixed as you can see right now it says restart now so right now if i restart it will be fixed and i have tested the ir bluster present on the device with the led rgb remote kind of app over here and the ir bluster actually works fine and it does pass the safety net test so yeah you can use google pay or any other banking apps right out of the box you do not need to flash magisk or use magisk hide now let's open some of the apps like chrome now let's open YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, now let's open Play Store, this Google app, now let's open all the apps from memory again. Yes the UI becomes a little bit jittery when you open a lot of apps as you can see. The, this LED RGB remote app was closed from memory, safety net, I just, okay, it is in memory, let's open play store again, it is in memory, chrome is in memory, so yeah, the memory management should not be too good, but yeah, it's good enough in my opinion, let's open all the apps again, okay, I tapped on it, so yes, the UI becomes a little bit slow with a lot of apps. This is what you can expect with this device, I guess. So I would say this is a pretty great daily driver. If you want a custom ROM on your Redmi Note 5 Pro, the Dark Fist is still a good choice. And here is the end to end Geekbench code on this ROM. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel already if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now. Thank you.